My name is Mick Cummins. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Bayside City Council, uh, which is, uh, takes in the suburbs of Brighton, Sandringham, along the coast just south of Melbourne. At the moment we're redeveloping our organisational strategy uh, and I'm spending quite a bit of time um, massaging the, the language if you like but also uh, getting the buy-in from the, our leadership group in the organisation. Without that it's not going to go anywhere uh, and a key part of that strategy is about how we become truly customer centric in terms of the way we operate uh, and whilst we've put a lot of foundational pieces in place to make sure that we're pretty good. Uh, we've got a long way to go in terms of uh, really embedding that, um, those beh behaviours and values in all of our staff every day in every transaction. Um, so that's a, that's a, a key um, area of focus at the moment. The other one is we've got a very substantial capital works program which is, hasn't been our history. So we're now delivering $60 million of capital works each year. Uh, and we're, how we gear up to deliver those projects to get maximum bang for buck in the community is, is, uh, is, is another key focus. Look, I think the biggest, the biggest, it's, the biggest potential problem we've encountered is internal collaboration in the organisation. So where we've, we, we, we've got this tension has, has you know, we're getting on top of it now, but a tension between the more traditional parts of the organisation who come to work, do a good job, deliver a service in a quite resource constrained environment, and they see me and other leaders in the organisation making investments in what you know the digital team or in the ICT space, um, and there's this there is this potential tension in the organisation about well hang on we're, we're the people actually delivering the service here we're we're the people with, with that connection with the community we're we're feeling the pinch in terms of resources and we see this you know these resources going into what could be considered to be some sort of peripheral activity what do they do you know, where's the product? You know, how are they going to help me? Yeah. Um, and I think that's changed in organisations. So how we probably haven't sold the message across the organisation about the importance of digital transformation, if you want to call it that, or some of the other uh, investments we're, we're making in uh, the enabling uh, parts of the organisation. So the learning out of that for me is that, you know, you can assume that people understand why we're doing this. You can assume that people in the organisation understand that we have to get much better at that customer interface. Don't assume that um, because pe people in, in operational parts of the business are consumed by the, the, the people there, their customers or their, the community people they're delivering services to as we want them to be. If they understood the flow and benefits of these investments to, to the organisation and to the community in, more clearly then I think you'd see a lot some of that tension fall away. So that's one issue and I think the big, the, the other issue of, of, you know, it's, is that internal collaboration piece. We haven't structured our organisation to put all the transformation enablers in one part. We're, we've, we're, they are, the enabling functions are spread across a number of divisions or departments and getting, getting the piece, those cogs to line up nicely, playing well, um, producing that sort of um, you know, collaborative, you know, seamless sort of outcome has been a challenge for us. Once again, getting better, and we probably could have set that up better in the first place in terms of just some of the cultural change that we were expecting in some of those teams. Oh, I think it is. I think it is the key because we're such a, we are such an inter interdependent organisation. Um, most organisations are, but local government in particular, because we've got the, the nature of the business means that uh, the the impact that one part of the organisation can have on on, a, on another is significant, often not well understood. Um, and if you don't have that collaboration in place, then it's a, it's a real struggle to to deliver the outcomes that you're seeking for the community. So um, the biggest, the key to that is the. In my, in my view, the, the, the leadership of the organisation and the approach it takes. So if the leaders are not collaborating, if they're not role modelling behaviour in the organisation, if they're not identifying and challenging behaviours that are inconsistent with that collaboration agenda, well, you know, the, 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 the staff will, will you know, respond accordingly yeah. or not. So I think 
this is about leadership. It's why, you know, if, and it's not, not me, it's, it's the collective leadership of the organisation, which is why we're spending a hell of a lot of time, particularly at that coordinator level in the organisation, the sort of frontline people leaders, they can kill nearly anything or, and they can create fantastic outcomes in nearly anything. It just depends on how consistently you can get that part of the organisation really aligned to the overall direction because they will bring many of the staff with them. So, critical. Uh, look, I think we've heard from about half a dozen speakers from very different perspectives um, and from each one of those speakers you go, oh, that's an interesting perspective, I haven't quite seen the world like that. Uh, and so on the one hand it's uh, a, a good insight into what's happening across the sector. There's some ideas I think we can steal uh, or collaborate on um, and, the, and I think there's, you know, the, the commonality running through all of this is that it's we're all on a journey and when most of us are a fair way from the finish line and and I think there is that great opportunity for collaboration within the sector um, and I've made a contact with with uh, another one of the organizations that we're speaking today uh, and we'll be pursuing uh, some you know some joint activity because I think we're reasonably aligned about where we might see the future I think the most inspiring story I came out of today for me was the story f uh, from Northern Grampians where they're collaborating with five other councils in uh, in the west of Victoria in a, in a very substantial way if they can pull that off I think that's that's gold um, so I think you know the ability to put parochial interests aside work together with neighboring communities um, to overcome the, the, the resource deficits they have. Pretty inspiring stuff if they can pull it up, pull it off. And I thought, you know, that was, you know, that's, I, I came away thinking, I love that story. <laughs>